Hey, everybody. Welcome to this developer primer on React, part of the 2020 Esri Developer Summit. My name is Josh Peterson. I lead a team of developers in Esri's Denver regional office. And I'm Cody Lawson. I'm a user interface and user experience developer at Esri. So we're going to tackle this in four steps. I'll start off by exploring the paradigm of React. Then Cody will dive into the fundamental concepts of state, props, and JSX. And then finally, I'll wrap up with some pointers for integrating React into the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. So let's talk about our mental model when we work with React. The most basic principle of React is that your app's UI is just a function of its state. Building off of this, we can start to develop a mental model where we see our app's UI as a pure byproduct of what our app's state is, with a bit of code we write in the middle that makes this happen. And that's the magic of React. So let's look at an example. Here we have a simple UI with a text input with a number 42 in it. The state of this UI can be described as a simple JavaScript object where the key is answer and the value is 42. Finally, we write some code to bind our UI to our state. Don't worry about the syntax here so much. It's called JSX and Cody's gonna go over it in the next section. The thing to notice here is that in order for our UI to render a different value in the input, which is currently 42, we don't need any additional code. Any updates to our state object will automatically result in an update to our UI, keeping our code very straightforward and simple. So state and props are two of the fundamental building blocks of a React component. State is set from within a component and it can't be mutated directly. It has to be updated with a setter function and it triggers a re-render when it's updated. Props are read-only, and they're passed from a parent component, and these also trigger a re-render when they're updated. In this example, you can see that we have a React component called app, and it returns a header and an input with a value of 42. Now, if we try to type in this input and update the value, you can see that nothing is happening. This is because we haven't hooked up the onChange event to update the value that we're passing it. This functionality would require state. So let's go ahead and check that out. So first, what we need to do is import a hook from React called useState. This allows us to create a value within our React component and update that value based on some event. So here, we'll create a constant to hold that value that's going to be passed into our input. And we'll call that input value and a setter function that it's going to give us back from the hook to update that value. And we'll give it the default value that we want to put into that input, in this case, 42. So now we just have to pass this input value into our input and create the onChange event for that input whenever you type into it. So that gives us back an event. And with that event, we can call our set input value and we give it the actual value of the input, which would be e.target.value. So now you can see that when we type in this input, we actually get an updated value as we go. So that takes care of state. But another tool we have is props. So in our index.js, we have a component that actually renders our app component. So here in our app component, we can add a theme property and give it a value of tomato. So now that we've created that custom theme property, we can actually use that in our app component to update the UI and change how it renders. So in our app component, the first argument that's passed in is props. And we can use that prop in our class name and give it the props.theme. Now you can see that the header is rendering with a custom class that we've already defined in our CSS. So you might have noticed that the return of that component looked a lot like HTML. And that's because React embraces the fact that rendering logic is inherently coupled with other UI logic. This means that we're not separating concerns of a component into separate files for the template or for the logic or for the state. Instead, that's all within a single component. So JSX is a syntax extension for JavaScript. 
It's similar to a template file in any other framework. And it makes it easy to understand the large DOM trees. So you get to see your component logic together with actual DOM elements that you're going to be rendering. And it's technically not valid HTML. It must be compiled to regular JavaScript. We can see what this looks like in this example, where here we're returning JSX of hello, and then this props name would be whatever name that you have in your component. And on the right side, React has to actually compile that into a JavaScript function. So here, the first argument of create element is the type of element you're going to be giving it, and then any properties you'd be passing into this. So in this case, we're not passing any properties. And then after that would be any children that would be rendered inside of this h1 component. So in this case, we have two children of hello, and then the props.name. And the nice thing about JSX is that you can actually write JavaScript directly inside of it. So here we have a variable called todos array, and we're going to map over that. And for every todo in that array, we're going to render a list item with the todo value. OK, so the million dollar question is, how do we use React with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript? Since this is only a primer, we can't go too deep here. But we've got a few resources to point you to. If you didn't know, Esri has a ton of open source projects available on GitHub. Head over to esri.github.io to see everything. Let me call out three resources in particular. First is Esri Loader, which is a tiny library to help you use the JavaScript API in applications built with frameworks like React. It does this by abstracting the Dojo AMD loader into functions that we can just import as JS modules. It's really versatile too. You can do cool things like preload or lazy load the JavaScript API, load it from a specific URL, so that could be any version of the, the JavaScript API from the CDN, or even from an on-prem uh, deployment of the JavaScript API. And you can even pass specific Dojo configurations in case you need to do that. My favorite thing about the Esri loader, about Esri loader is that it works really well with Create React App. The ArcGIS Webpack plugin, on the other hand, approaches the AMD loader problem in a very different way. By configuring Webpack directly to understand how to load the JavaScript API, you can get a much more native feeling experience when using it in a React app. The big caveat here, though, is that you need control over your Webpack config, which you won't necessarily have if you're using Create React app or any other kind of boilerplate. For big projects, the ArcGIS Webpack plugin is usually the best approach. But for small to medium projects, you might end up spending more time learning how to configure Webpack than actually building your application. And I would recommend Esri Loader. And then finally, Esri React Boot is a nice boilerplate to get you up and running quickly with React and the JavaScript API. Out of the box, it comes with React, Redux, Esri Loader, and a number of other useful modules. It's really, really good for just testing React out with the JavaScript API, but it's also a solid foundation for building production apps. So those are some great open source libraries, but we also have some excellent content in the official JavaScript API documentation. Let's go look at that. So from the JavaScript API homepage in the Esri docs, if you click on the guide and then scroll down and click on the developer tooling topic, you can see that we have a lot of great resources for integrating the JavaScript API with third-party frameworks. I'll click on the React page. And here you can see that we have everything from installing the ArcGIS Webpack plugin or Esri Loader to code samples on how to use them. Each of the code samples has a tab for the implementation with the Webpack plugin and a tab for the implementation with Esri Loader, which is really useful. So I highly recommend this page as a good starting point. And then finally, check out our other Dev Summit sessions um, that talk about React this year. So this session was just intended to give you a high level vocabulary and understanding of React and its place in the ArcGIS ecosystem. But a number of the other sessions are going to dive much deeper on this topic. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, we don't have any hyperlinks to share. I'll show you where, they'll, uh, where these sessions will live on YouTube. So from YouTube, if you search for Esri events, uh, the, first re the first result is the Esri events channel. And from this channel, you can search for React. And you can see here that I'm seeing some results from the 2019 edition of, of the Esri Developer Summit. Uh, but by the time you're searching this and this video has been published, you'll see some 2020 sessions available here as well. So that's all we have time for in this developer primer. Hopefully, we've talked you into giving React a go. And you can go check out some of the more deep dive sessions um, on this topic and learn a little bit more about it. Thanks.